Good afternoon, everyone. It is 3.07 on Monday, December 3rd, 2018. My name is Michael DiCarlo, and this is DiCarlosDanger.com, my blog. And it's been a little while since I've made a video. It's not that I've wanted to be away, but just having uh, been plenty motivated to do them, plenty of information out there to do them about. Just call me a little bit lazy, and I apologize to those of you that Actually, my subscribers that actually watch this on a regular basis, I do appreciate you guys. I do. And I know that we share a lot of uh, common common themes and common influence. We're all patriots. We're all truth seekers of truth. And we are all, we all want to shed light on to, into the darkness that has been the, the lie that has been propagated amongst the people for so long. In international news, the last couple of days, France has had riots, supposedly, that you'll see on the mainstream media. Have any of you taken the opportunity to do a little background research for yourself and look at some other, other opinions or other uses of freedom of speech, other folks who have taken the time to create video there other than it comes from the box on the wall. There, I saw it, ran across a video and it was in a tweet. Uh, who was it from? I uh, retweeted it. Breaking News, I believe, believe it was from on Twitter. I believe it was from Breaking News on Twitter. Uh, sorry about that. My camera went out and went in. So that's pretty funny. Uh, if, you get any, if any of you guys uh, watch Steve Motley, he uh, has been experiencing dip, uh, difficulty uploading videos lately, so that's kind of funny. Hi. Hi, NSA. Are you listening? Well, anywho, the police officers in France, during these so-called riots where there's gas everywhere, they took off their helmets in solidarity with the people. People were wearing uh, yellow vests, as in, don't tase me, bro, or hey, don't run me over with a car. And there was quite a few people out there with Q shirts. And if you haven't looked into Q or QAnon or any of this Team 17 stuff, I, it, it's a wonderful research project for you at worst. Uh, and it could be very eye-opening to functions within the government and how they actually work. Now, if you haven't seen any of this, the, if you haven't seen the police officers take off their helmets in France... I have a an assessment on why you haven't. Some of you may be familiar with the Five Eyes program. Some of you might be familiar with uh, that. And what it is, is it's five nations. The U.S., not America, but U.S., two different... U.S. and America are two different things here, folks. The U.S., Canada, United Kingdom or Great Britain, Australia, and New Zealand. What they have is they have a pact where their intelligence agencies, since it's illegal to spy on Americans, it's not illegal for, say, a United Kingdom citizen or a citizen from New Zealand or a citizen from Australia or Canada to spy on an American. And those things get done and then get fed through official channels back to the United States and its agencies of intelligence collection as international data, even though it was collected here in the States. Similarly, sort of like this, uh, this is what I think about the Steele dossier with the president that has been going and dragging on for two years with this Robert Mueller cat. It is, I am of the opinion of, and I don't, this is, no. I have no facts to back this up other than just my mind working, that the former Secretary of State, whose foundation currently has lost a significant amount of con financial contributors, 
The former Secretary of State who went around with their former President Hubby to go on a speaking tour that only sell, sold out 17% of its first engagement had corporate or corporate 501c3s are corporate uh, businesses are corporate she had plenty of financial uh, contributors to her campaign that could allow something like this to occur and when it comes to the you know, if you do background on media you just do a little research on it the, the all the media is owned by like six or seven cats six or seven companies uh, all this <laughs> we we uh, if you do background on all the commercials you see when you see them especially when it comes to more we're able to profile your spending patterns and how you pay your bills off of one account you'll start seeing uh, the correlations especially if you go out and buy like a large ticket item I mean, uh, oddly enough, the auto only, well, I, did, I did see a Chevy truck commercial. I'm a Ford guy. But what do you think about that? They're moving all those, <laughs> they want to move those uh, plants out of the country. That's crazy. But anyway, back to this five eyes thing. What I've done is I've got a little whiteboard here. All right. Let's see here if I can get this about right. All right. This is the eye. These are the eyelashes, the five eyes. Okay. In the United States, let me get this up here. We got plenty of corporate influence, right? This is the money that goes in from the U.S. side. But the thing is, too, is that all of us have seen public service announcements on television. So, therefore, it flows back out of there as well. So, you have money from both corporate interests that they're trying to sell you something and from the government that's trying to sell you something. So either way, that's not really a, uh, that's more socialist than we've been led to believe, if you look at it that way. Then we move on over here to Canada. Canada, you got it both, you got it from the money from the government coming out, and then you also have corporate influences from the United States going up there. Corporate influences from the United States go all the way across here, because we sell automobiles around the world, we sell different, uh, mining equipment around the world. All these large corporate companies have interests. You ever wondered why you know we go to war in places to protect our interests? If any of you have, if have Netflix, I would recommend the, uh, the uh, it's a series. It's called Frontier. <laughs> and you can learn about the Hudson Bay Company and the enforcement level techniques to protect the interests of the company and how it was done while wearing red coats. <laughs> you start to put this stuff together. Uh, United Kingdom I got here in red because they hold all of Canada, Australia, and New Zealand are all part of the United Kingdom to this day. And suspiciously, we kind of are too once you put a red shield um, if you put a red shield on here, all this ties in together, okay? They have the money that goes in and out from the government back and forth. They feed it back and forth, their intelligence. All the intelligence goes into this area here, and it's fed back and forth. So, in theory, you could have had a Canadian reporter, say, in Germany, re or flew to Russia, made a report in Germany in the international papers that got picked up by a agent from the United Kingdom that got fed back to the United States to say, hey, this these guys are bad and there's Russian collusion. Which there's no collusion there is no collusion that has been proven for the election. The other stuff is business dealings. They're two separate things. The current president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, the duly elected president, was a businessman. Business is nothing more than a lie agreed upon to turn a dollar. Always has been, always will be. That's why you go to work for five days, take one day off for yourself, you're supposed to give the other one to God to pray for the sins that you committed while doing business. Because in this world, the prince of the air rules it all, Cole is saying. 
But you can get some documentation here from these these cats. One guy's name's Kevin Shipp. He's a former NSA or a CIA. Uh, yeah, he does some really good presentations on the deep state and the shadow government. There's this other cat too, uh, Robert David Steele. He uh, is pretty. He's got he's he's got to cast a wide net, but he's pretty well versed in a lot of stuff. He's a, another CIA operative guy uh, that just kind of wants to tell the truth, clear off his soul. Over on this side, over here, you got this fellow named Bill Benny. He is an NSA analyst. Or, actually, he was like a honcho in the NSA when they started spying on everybody. Now, they had the ability to spy on everybody prior to 9-11, or prior to the events in September of 2001, but they didn't have a reason to. But after the attacks in New York City, in which three buildings fell, not two, three, 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 three actually, Three. Put it better that way. Three. Catch, caught myself. Sorry about that. Uh, three buildings fell. That gave the agencies an excuse to more or less make sure everybody was doing the right thing. And if you've done any background research into my blog posts, you will know that I've written about the... 100 mile constitution free zone before you'll know that uh, I've written I've written about this stuff for about a year and a half almost two years now certain different topics I haven't I took a little while off when I was trying to be a politician I'm trying to drain the swamp here that's what this information is for because I'm a veteran for the United States of America and I want to keep America great I want to keep it great because I'm an American at heart. I work for the United States government. There's two different entities. Sometimes you get put in positions where in order to make sure you give the... I mean, I work for you, the American taxpayer. To shirk my duties would have been considered stealing from you. And I would have rather apply abilities that I... I acquired through my experiences to steal from our enemy instead of steal from you. But the older I get, it's not that I have any regrets. I just see the methods that were used being used on us in this country. If you have any ability to, if you, yeah, you can look this up as well. You can, it's a PDF probably. Uh, one tribe at a bit, one tribe at a time. Uh, do some background on David Galula. And counterinsurgency, the Army Field Manual's out there. The Army Field Manual for uh, the Guard has been out forever. That's why the the panic and everything, and that's why they try to label uh, label veterans and stuff as uh, bad people. The Guard is actually this purpose of the National Guard was to actually blow up bridges, so if we were ever invaded, that the the enemy couldn't advance. But here's the cool, here's the, the beautiful thing about the right to bear arms is that any invading force, any invading force that would choose to invade this country would have to fight neighborhood for neighborhood. And the closer you get to the southern border and the more out west, further out west you go, the more weapons people have and the more ammunition we have stocked, people have stocked up. And it's, it's it's nothing to be ashamed about. <laughs> the right to self-preservation is a natural right. The right to protect your family is a natural right. The Constitution confines government. We'll talk about this at another time too. The Constitution confines the government. It doesn't doesn't can find you or I conducting business or exchanging value, which is what business is. Exchanging value is a better way of saying it's a lot agreed upon to turn a dollar, though. I will say that much. Well, anyway, peace to, peace to all, all my friends. Caution all the enemies. No quarter for tyrants. Michael DiCarlo, signing off. I love you all. I hope this finds you happy and healthy and, and getting ready for this wonderful Christmas season. Take care.